Monday matinees begin right here on the Mutual Audio Network. Monday matinees begin right here on the Mutual Audio Network. The following audio drama is rated PG for parental guidance. Excuses that I never grew old. Who said that? An English actor by the name of Michael Caine. Jacob, I know you are thinking about your future and this crown. I also know you are at odds with your older brother Isaac. Everyone assumes he is next in line. But right now, I am in this game. I am on the hunt. So if you or your brother will one day place this crown on your head, Remember one thing. Many others have this obsession, and they want this just as badly. And they see you as an obstacle. I want to learn from you, Father. Show me. Teach me. I truly want to follow in your footsteps. I can do this. Really, Jacob? And tell me why. Why should you, above all else, be king? Because I wish to preserve your legacy. And also add to it with my own. <clears throat> Son, do you even have a clue as to why I became king? Do you really know? Yes, I do. You became king out of necessity. The world was being destroyed by bad people. Really smart, but truly evil people. You made a plan to beat them at their own game. That much is true. And it took me so many years to even learn their game their rules, to gain their trust. Some of the most incredibly nasty people on the face of the planet. And then I took it all from them. Teach me, Father. I haven't been tainted. I have your blood in my veins. I love God, and with your teachings I can beat them too. Jacob, I know your heart is in the right place, but it's a mistake to play on my vanity. This crown has no bloodline. Let me ask you, is this really an obsession? And if so, what are you so obsessed with? Have you not seen what this crown has done to me? Do you not see my sacrifices? And I make them every single day. Why would you even want this? Because you are more than my father. You are my hero. When your father is not only the greatest man you know, but the greatest man to billions of other people, tell me, why wouldn't I want to be like you? My son, I didn't become king because I wanted to be like anybody. I simply wanted to free my people from the monsters that ruined my country. And that is where you and I are fundamentally worlds apart.
New Kingdom Radio Theater. New Kingdom Radio Theater presents The Rise of King Asylus. Brought to you by the J.D. Micah Publishing Company. Publishers of the novel The Rise of King Asylus, due for release in fall 2018. Visit www.theriseofkingasilas.com for information and updates on the publication of this much-anticipated book. One of the advantages King Asilas always had was the element of surprise. He kept his inner circle very tight and no one dared dispense information to the public without his approval. The few times information had been leaked, those responsible were either hanged or shot by the king himself. Only the most loyal and serious-minded professionals could work with those in or around the king's inner circle. This is why he was able to make daring moves without triggering reactions until it was too late. This is how King Asylus was able to force the European alliance to react in Russia while seeing the first phase of his ambitious plan into motion, invading Mexico, Central and South America. Your Majesty, we've completed another round of tests on lifting the fog on test groups. We've been using top secret sites around the country to see if the subjects would react differently. But what we've found is people always respond the same way, no matter where they reside. And how exactly do they respond? Well, perhaps Lord Roberts is better qualified to explain their responses from a medical perspective, because from my view, they generally become animals. Your Majesty, what my team and Lord Oreb's team have discovered is when people wake from this fog, a pattern of reactions occur. For a few days, they experience immense euphoria, like someone might experience when they are high on drugs. I wouldn't know what that's like, but go on. We've learned the frequencies that induce this permanent fog suppresses much of the brain's ability to produce natural endorphins. Not only that... The fog also inhibits our body's production of several particular chemicals. So, what happens initially is the brain begins to produce endorphins, and a euphoria lasting a few days occurs. But the body readjusts, and the production of endorphins seem to level off with the production of other chemicals. And do these other chemicals also make them behave like hippies for a few days? Hippies, sir? Never mind, go on. If I may interject, Lord Roberts, I've observed people in this initial stage dancing and singing with great enthusiasm. It's as if they are happy and they can hardly stand it. At first, I found the behavior disturbing, and then one night I had a dream that my fog was lifted and I was dancing and running around like them. I think I understand this feeling. I call this the happy stage, but then something very strange and wicked happens. My apologies, Lord Roberts. Please continue. Well, sir, it's like what Lord Oreb says. After a few days, the subjects act very differently. They become very irate and violent. In one group, subjects beat each other so badly, they were literally killing each other. But it wasn't their beating each other to death that was the most disturbing part. It was how they were killing each other. Sir, Lord Oreb and I spent extensive time talking with these subjects. They knew and understood things normal, everyday people couldn't possibly know. I'm not sure I follow. Your Majesty, when the fog is lifted, it is our belief in ancient knowledge or powers of some sort resurface. People are able to understand things, and I'm not just talking about things like reading minds. They appear to be able to do that as well. But they can levitate and move objects with their minds. Sir, we've observed them lifting large, heavy objects, like they were tossing paper plates. 
and some of them even developed the ability to communicate telepathically. When I got close to some of them, I could hear their voices in my head. One sample group had to be incinerated, because we tried shooting them and they were able to literally dodge bullets. Your Majesty, people who've had the fog lifted become incredibly powerful. Lord Roberts, is there a way to contain these powers or isolate them? Sir, once we removed the subjects from their containment and placed them in the fog again, they lose all their abilities. Some can't even remember their names afterwards. Your Majesty, if we lift the fog from a large population, we simply can't know for sure how it will turn out. We could potentially unleash a huge problem we won't be able to contain. Not so. If we unleash Bedlam, we could just subject people to the fog again. And we can control them that way. Sir, I believe if we lift the fog on a team of scientists and specialists, perhaps we can learn more about the frequencies and how they affect people. Better still, get a little close to finding its source. Allow me to put together a special team, and within a few months, we'll have a much greater understanding of what we are dealing with and use it to our advantage. We don't have a few months. We need to make our moves within a few weeks. Might I make a suggestion? Lord Roberts, continue your work with Lord Capone. The two of you will put together your teams and begin your work immediately. I need Lord Oreb and Lord Vargas to prepare our forces domestically to move on Mexico after we lift the fog on the Mexican people. The Mexican government will be begging us to help them when millions of their people suddenly become bloodthirsty and powerful enough to wreck even their military forces. They will be decimated by their own population. And then we'll come in and save the day. We'll be seen as liberators and occupy that country without ever losing a single soldier. Give me the word, sir. I'll ready my teams at a moment's notice. Lord Oreb, commence Operation American Spartan and begin immediate preparations for the Spartan missions in the Western Hemisphere. Both of you go back to your posts. Use your High Council communication interfaces to receive your final orders within the hour. Dismissed. Silas. Gabriel, we need to talk. You are too forward with Seraph. It's important, of the highest urgency. Asilas, I am here to help you, not to serve you. Remember this when addressing me. Yes, apologies, Gabriel. I forget my place. Much better. Now, what do you need, King? It's urgent. Come to me. Again, Asilas, I do not. I can't talk about it over the phone. Anyone could be listening. This connection is encrypted with a blessing by the Lord himself. No mortal can hear us. It isn't mortals I'm worried about. Ah, uh, so this deals with Satan himself. And it's gone mad. Worry not, not even the Prince of Principalities could intercept this. I don't care, Gabriel. I need to talk to you face to face about this. Asylus. Gabriel, I demand your presence immediately. You are too forward, Asylus. You will address me with meekness or you will not address me at all. You will grace me with your presence or I will cut off your access to anyone in my kingdom. Do not toy with my patience, king, and do not test my will. You are a messenger of God and nothing more. I know God is on my side. Convene with God and tell me what he thinks you should do, O oh, holy one. Expect me. What is so urgent and secretive that you have to see me instead of speaking on the phone? Some things are just too sensitive to be settled in the phone. Besides, body language and human frequency emissions can sometimes tell you more than words can. There is no need to be cryptic, Asylus. Say what you must say. I've given you full access to all of my country's most advanced technologies and even our top scientists. Your unrestricted access would be a grave and troublesome mistake for any other leader. But it is not my place to question the messenger of God. I am sensing great doubt in you, King. It's time I ask you for something, Gabriel. We've developed something called the poison filter. Surely you are aware of it. 
but it has been modified, and now we can use it to block cloak frequencies that have been inhibiting the full capacity of the human brain, especially putting all of mankind in a fog state, unable to reach our fullest capabilities. I admit I am aware of this. What is its source, Gabriel? Tell me this. Silas, I admire your acumen. You are certainly unlike most human beings. In another time, we could have been close friends, perhaps even rivals. You know, you have the uncanny ability to see and interpret things far beyond the scope of your immediate sources. I suppose this is why you made your way to become an absolute ruler. It is true there is a source, but it isn't what you think it is. It's not a technology, it is something else. Something else? If it's not unnatural, it must be natural. What sort of natural emissions might interfere with humanity like this? Ah, uh, but what is unnatural about natural things creating? Is blood unnatural? Art? Death? Gabriel. And you are not one to be distracted either. Single-minded. All right, I'll answer your question. It is a being, a living, breathing, immortal monster. Where can I find this monster, and how can I destroy it? It would be immensely unwise to pursue this, Asylus. I strongly suggest you do not press me on this issue. You will not only put yourself and your country at peril, but the entire human race. And why is that? If it is a monster, it is clearly driven by nefarious impulses. It is not that simple. If you destroy this monster, you are destroying something fundamental, basic. Are you saying that this creature is part of something fundamental about the universe? Astute. Yes. And its separation from us is what gives us such power. This is unnatural. You should fear the evil it brings about. I am a man of God. I fear no evil. I am an angel of the Lord, am I not? I fear such evil. I thought angels felt no fear. I thought a man of God would know when to feel fear. Gabriel, don't think I don't know what you are. From the minute you showed up in Dr. Ezekiel's office, I knew there was something off about you. What sort of angel requires a phone to communicate? You then demand unlimited access to our best and brightest? Gabriel, you may be powerful, but you are no angel of God. Silas, times are changing. Prayer just doesn't work the way it used to. The phone was... Gabriel. Look, Silas, what matters is I'm here to help you. Your nation will fall, your Spartans will fail. I've seen my share of wars. You are a great commander, but you should know only to play with forces that you can control. Heed my words. If others learn what you have done, it will be the end of humanity. It's too late, Gabriel. I've already given the order. Lord Oreb and Lord Vargas were given their orders to prepare America for an invasion of Mexico using an untried weapon, a modified poison filter. But King Asalas was a master of misdirection. The moment his enemies became fixated with one arm of his power, they were forced to react to a different strategy. And just when the monster group thought they had him cornered, they learned they were merely playing into his hand and found themselves trapped in another one of Asylus's mazes. America initiated a plan to lift the fog from the Mexican population, sending the country tumbling into mass chaos. This utterly shocked the entire world. For in the end, it was the Mexican people that revolted against the police, the drug cartels, and even their own government. And just as Asylus predicted, the Mexican president called on America to save them from complete collapse. But once American troops arrived, Asalis made sure the Mexican president and most of the government officials were dragged into the streets by the angry mobs and murdered in the most sensational ways imaginable. The people levitated all of the government officials hundreds of feet in the air and made them drop to their deaths. The 
whole heart-wrenching event was streamed live on the internet. Asylas had Lord Oreb strategically stopped the poison filter and people returned to normal, finding themselves occupied and now a part of the new kingdom of America. Good evening. The world is in shock this evening at the announcement that Mexico is being occupied by the new kingdom of America. King Asilas and members of the High Council have released a statement which reads, and I quote, Mexico is no longer a sovereign nation. It is now a part of the new kingdom of America and will likely become our 53rd state. Mexico's president and all government officials, including members of the Senate and Chamber of Deputies, have all been murdered in the streets by angry mobs prior to American forces arriving at the capital. It was an unfortunate chain of events that took place in which the people of Mexico rose up against a corrupt government and literally destroyed it. The new kingdom of America, under the leadership of King Asilas, is now the system under which the Mexican people shall be governed from this day forth. Lord Alberto Vargas has been appointed by the king to oversee the establishment of a new governmental infrastructure in Mexico and has added a title to Lord Vargas, Governor of Mexico. Many Mexican-Americans across the kingdom have expressed great enthusiasm at the liberation of Mexico as countless families are being reunited. And plans are also underway to tear down the thousands of miles of a massive wall erected during the time of the United States. And King Asalas himself has said he will be among the many workers on the first day that deconstruction of the wall takes place. King Asilas says he welcomes all Mexicans with open arms into his kingdom and plans to address the Mexican people in an official ceremony, but no date has been set. But there are still many unanswered questions surrounding the sudden and sensational end to the Mexican power structure. The Canadian Prime Minister has denounced the occupation of Mexico in a statement saying, and I quote, America should be helping the Mexican nation by rebuilding its government structure and allowing the Mexican people to govern themselves. But King Asilas fired back at the Prime Minister in a statement saying, quote, Mexico is overrun by corruption, drug lords, crooked law enforcement, and military. America did not destroy the Mexican government. They were absolutely self-serving, and the great people of Mexico rose up against them. America liberated the Mexican people from a sick and disgusting government. Under this king, Mexicans will no longer be held hostage by the drug cartels or corrupt police. Mexicans are now Americans, end quote. America's occupation of Mexico has sent shockwaves around the world. Even as American forces quietly move further into Russian territory, it is apparent something big is happening and is having quite an impact on world politics. <laughs> i 
and I'm a hunter and yeah, I'm a dreamer. Look at all the people looking down on me and I'm looking from the sky. Man. Since the way that things go, you can put the curse on me and I'll still be flying high. Yeah, you're living off your fire proofs and then you're running home and you listen to your mind's words. You're letting out his mumbles. If I see you sleep, I'm eating it. I came out here because you said we'd be hanging out with your friends from Cocker City. I don't see any lake out here. Look, why don't you just relax? <laughs> I found us some nice shade, and we can just hang out here and talk. I've got a lot I want to tell you. You want to talk? Talk about what exactly? About what we've been through together. Our training. My feelings for you. Your feelings? Look, I think you have the wrong idea, Nabal. We talked about your feelings before, and I told you we can do this. Why not? Why can't we have feelings? Because we're Spartans now? Because we're human machines? Human weapons for the king? Look, we can fight for the king. We'll go into battle. We will. We'll do what we have to do. But why can't you and I do something? Something that's just you and I. It, it will be our secret. And no one will have to know but us. We will be something together, and that will give us more strength when we go into battle. Nabal, please step back. You're getting too close to me and I am not comfortable with this. Where are your friends? Are they coming? Or was this just a lie to get me alone out here? Don't resist, Abigail. I want you to be mine. I want to make you mine. No, I don't belong to anyone. The king is not here to stop us, Abigail. He can't come between us right now. Nabal, no, stop! Your Majesty, you have an urgent call. It's Abigail Sierra. She says she needs to speak with you immediately. Abigail, what's the matter? Uh, Silence. I really need to see you. Why? What's wrong? Tell me. One of my unit comrades, he tried to... He yelled me down and I tried to fight him out, but... Say no more. Where are you? I will come to you now. Sir, is everything all right? No. No, it isn't. I have to go now. But, Your Majesty, we are in the middle of finalizing our European strategy. I know, but right now I have to tend to something personal. You and Lord Orb continue. I'll call in Quentin Capone and he can sit in on my behalf. Okay, sir. If you say it is best. But we'll have to bring Capone up to speed on everything. That will slow us down a bit. Get Capone up to speed, and if I'm back before he can help you complete the strategy, then I will take over. But I don't know how long I will be gone, so waste no time. Abigail, the doctor said you suffered some minor bruises, but otherwise are fine. Tell me who did this to you. One of the Spartans in my unit, Nabal. Nabal? Did he... No, no, he didn't. He tried to. He underestimated my strength. You fought him off of you? I fought him off, my king. I called you because I didn't know what else to do. It was my first reaction. I am sorry to have pulled you away from your duties. No, Abigail. I'm sorry this happened to you. I'm going to see this Nabal right now. I promise you won't have to worry about him again. Are you going to put him in jail? He's a jerk. He should go to jail for this. Don't worry about him. He won't hurt anybody anymore. thought you would get away with trying to rape Abigail. Rape? 
Why didn't you try to rape Abigail, your majesty? She wanted me to do what I did. She wanted you to beat her up? Are you insane or stupid? King of Silas, Abigail and I did a role play. We went to the lake by Cocker City because she asked me to take her there. The whole time I was supposed to pretend that I was trying to convince her to sleep with me, but we were never going to actually do it. I swear. You expect me to believe that crackpot story? It's true, sir. I admit I did get a little rough, but that was part of the plan, too. She she wanted me to get rough. She she wanted to see if she was strong enough to fight off a big, strong man, and she did. She beat the crap out of me. Unfortunately, Mr. Nabal, I don't believe you. Your Majesty, don't kill me. I swear this was all part of Abigail's plan. She wanted this to happen. Why? Why would she want that? I, I don't know. But I swear to God, she's evil or something. Please, my king. Commandment number three, Nabal. You shall not take the name of the Lord, your God, in vain. You've been listening to The Rise of King Asylus, Episode 8, Lifting the Fog, starring J.V. Torres as King Asylus, Alex Olson as Gabriel, Dominic Notero as Jacob, Stephen Fisher as Lord Jeremy Oreb, Angelie Fitch as Lord Tracy Roberts, Benjamin Lusk as Nabal, Naomi Castillo as Abigail Sierra, Don Rosinski as Newsreader, and narrated by Sergei Brezhnikov. This episode features the songs Be You by The Intimates. Visit The Intimates at www.theintimatesmusic.com and Trees Cloud Soothe by Strange and Free. Visit Strange and Free at www.strange, the letter N, free.com and the song Reinvent by Pop Slop. Other music contributions by Kevin McLeod and Incompetech.com, freesound.org, airbornesound.com and audio jungle for more information about the cast the music and this production please visit www.theriseofkingasilas.com and be sure to listen to our friends on other podcasts like everlasting beholders empty and stranger lands this has been a production of the new kingdom radio theater in baltimore maryland copyright 2018 all rights reserved And stay tuned for Episode 9. Hello, I'm John Bell of Bells in the Bat Free. It's a comedy podcast. Fridays and every other Sunday. Well, anyway, back in Episode 5 of Bells in the Bat Free, we introduced the cowlets, tiny little cows. Where did all these cats come from? They're not cats, they're cows, and they're heading toward the water cooler. Stop it before... Now you can display your love of these tiny cows with genuine Cowlet t-shirts. You know what's really fun to do with these shirts? Get a whole bunch of people to buy them. Then you all gather together and run down the street. People will see these Cowlets coming toward them and think it's a stampede. You think that would really work, Brad? Shh, I'm pushing for bulk sales here. You can also get Cowlet mugs, clocks, and other items. Just go to thebatfree.com and click on shop. This is a limited time offer. No, it's not. You just do not not understand advertising, do you? Get your merchandise today with the official Cowlet design created by Jeff Music. Buying lots of them would bring music to my ears. Oh, stop. Stop.